All right, the NFL draft is coming up very soon for the Carolina Panthers. Of course, they have the number one overall pick. Conventional wisdom says that they're going to pick a quarterback with that. They absolutely need one because they haven't had a franchise quarterback in a while. They have Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson, and Will Levis to choose from. Joining me right now, someone who knows a little something about being a quarterback in the NFL, mm-hmm. Boomer Esiason. Thank you so much for, for being here. Uh, those four names, when you think about those four names, which one of those do you think deserves to be the number one overall pick for the Carolina? Panthers? You know, it's uh, it's hard to say. And I know that Frank Reich, my former college roommate, now the head coach of the Carolina Panthers, has done his due diligence on all four of those players. It's one of the reasons why they made the trade when they did, because they really wanted to get to know the players. And the one thing I know about Frank, uh, I know what size player he likes, uh, and, and that is the size between 6'2 and 6'5, somewhere between 215 and 235. So three of those four players that you mentioned fit the measurables. But what I don't know is who they are as people, because I did not sit down and meet them. I did not go through their backgrounds. I did not talk to their college coaches. I'm like everybody else out here wondering, you know, what special ingredient do each of these players have that Carolina would like to lock themselves onto and believe that, he is going to be the leader of the franchise for the next 10 to 15 years. So when I look at this, I say, well, Bryce Young has all the intangibles. Uh, He's a great leader. He's a great young man, it seems like. I've seen all of his interviews. Uh, His measurables, however, tell me, uh uh-oh, warning signs. And all of us that have ever played in the NFL and have been around the NFL recognize that the success of quarterbacks less than six feet, it's a very small list. And as Bill Parcells says, if the guy is under six foot, he better be Jesus Christ <laughs> right, to play the NFL. And, and he means that in a way that if Bryce Young turns out to be great, as everybody thinks that he will be, then, you know, he will have all the little intangibles as well as the physical aspect to be able to play this, to play the position much like Drew Brees do, did or uh, Russell Wilson did. So he's like, in other words, he's not a can't miss player. This is not a slam dunk number one. Because the other three players have all the physical measurements that you would desire as a quarterback. And all three players are tremendous athletes in their own right. And we've never seen an athlete like Anthony Richardson, who is really, to me, if I had a quarterback on my on my roster that I wasn't really sure about moving forward and he fell to me in the draft, I would take him because I would say that the upside for him is off the charts. And the guy that I would say is most closely uh, related to the the player when he came out of uh, college to Josh Allen is Will Levis from Kentucky. So a terrific athlete, maybe not the most accurate player in college, but then again, he was getting beat up in the SEC behind, you know, maybe not such a great offensive line. You you mentioned your uh, Frank used to be your college roommate. You guys know each other very well. Uh, and you, you also mentioned before that he likes the guys who are a little bit more on the bigger side. But when it comes down to the actual intangibles mm-hmm. on the field, uh, what do you think will make a quarterback thrive the most as Frank Reich, uh, as his head coach? What does he have to be able to do on, on the field to make sure that he is successful? He's got to be smart. He's got to be got, he's got to be a guy that loves football. He's got to be a guy that wants to be the leader, that wants to accept his role as the leading man, if you will, the alpha male in the room. That's going to take time. So you're not it's not going to happen overnight. Um, but these are the things. And Frank, by the way, you know, has been around a lot of great quarterbacks from Philip Rivers to, you know, Peyton Manning uh, to, to to Matt Ryan uh, to Andrew Luck, for that matter. So he knows what it takes to be successful in this league. And, of course, him being a quarterback himself, sitting behind Jim Kelly and also starting down there for the Carolina Panthers when they first came into existence. So, you know, he wants his quarterback to be competent. He wants his quarterback to be a great teammate. And he wants his quarterback to be a leader. He needs his quarterback to be accurate. Uh, He likes to throw the ball. He likes to throw the ball on fourth down. So, you know, if it's a fourth and three, it's not always going to be a running play. He wants his quarterback to be able to have that that calmness about him to be able to make those plays. He's one of the most aggressive play callers in the NFL. So whoever they decide on, you know, whoever Scott Fitterer and Frank Reich have decided on, I hear there's a consensus in the building. I'm not sure who it is because Frank has ghosted me the last two weeks because he knows (laughs) I'm a media guy and he knew that I would probably do interviews like this. Uh, Whoever they have settled on, 
Uh, I think they really feel confident about that. And remember, Scott Fitterer did come from Seattle, mm-hmm. and he was there when they drafted Russell Wilson. So they saw a smaller quarterback take his team to the Super Bowl twice. So uh, that's why I kind of think that the Bryce Young size issue may not be as important to them as it is to the rest of us outside. Yeah, and, and I think, uh, you know, Scott Fitter pretty much said as much a couple of weeks ago in a, in a press conference. He said if they were to choose Bryce Young, they would have a plan to kind of beef him up a little bit, but also uh, insulate him as well if he's playing for the Carolina Panthers. Uh, so going forward with the Panthers, with this number one, one, number one overall pick, you've known for a while that you've had this pick. And also the scouts have done their homework on these guys for not, not just the last few months, the last few years. They've gotten a chance to know these guys. Do you think at this point, as we're standing a day before the draft, that the Carolina Panthers know, or do you think they're still going to be deliberating maybe up until they have to make that number one overall pick? I believe they know, and I I believe they have also done a really good job of keeping it to themselves and not even telling the players or the agents who are representing the players. Because normally if the agents know and, you know, there's no reason to even get into negotiations at this point because they know what the contract's going to be. So there really is no negotiation. Uh, there's no reason to tell anybody. And I don't know if the NFL has asked them to be this quiet, but uh, it's been amazing. I mean, there has not been one leak anywhere. Now, there's been a Reddit post by some wacko who knows where that came from. And a lot of this stuff starts happening around the draft to basically sometimes to put a, you know, a bad, uh, a bad light on another player, or another prospect. So, and it seems like for whatever reason, CJ Stroud is starting to have some of that stuff happen to him, which is unfair and unfortunate. But I always say this about all these quarterbacks or any player that gets drafted. It's not about your first contract anyway. It's about your second contract. Your first contract says, okay, here you go. We think you're good enough to play in the NFL. The second contract validates that you belong in the NFL with life-changing money. So ask Jalen Hurts. He'll tell you uh, just what that second contract Mm -hmm. means and, and that's what we all have to wait for. And hopefully one of these young men, if not all of these young men, live up to that status that they're going to be drafted at. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot. You may have answered it a little bit earlier, but I just want to know for sure, without doing the homework as far as who these guys are, from what you've seen on tape, what you've read about these guys, if you were in Frank Reich's place, who would you take with the number one overall pick in this draft? Yeah, if I were in his shoes, I, I, I would probably – See, I'm more of aggressive. I'm more aggressive than he is, like in terms of, uh, and he would tell you this. I think, I, 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 there's something about Will Levis that I really like, and huh. it reminds me of Josh Allen. I, I, I just can't get away from that comparison. And Josh fell to number seven to Buffalo, and you know, look at Baker Mayfield one before him, Sam Darnold one before him, and you're thinking to yourself, man, I, if I could have just gotten my hands on Josh Allen, I would have been really happy back in the day. So. Wow. Will Levis has that kind of feel for me, and uh, that would be uh, like a shocking result if that happens, I believe, because to me, the safer player right now, right now, is Bryce Young. And I believe that Bryce could probably go right into an NFL game tomorrow and play. I think he's that, uh, you know, he's he's that advanced mentally. Uh, I think he's come out of a great program with great players and high expectations, and he pretty much lived up to all of those expectations. So uh, I think it's probably going to be Bryce. But for me, man, I take a shot at Will, I think. So they gave up two first-round picks, so a bunch of other picks, and a star wide receiver, and you think that they can do that with for Will Levis? Maybe. I mean, that, that's, <laughs> I, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, again, I, I go back to the Josh Allen comparison. That's all I'm saying. And I remember, you know, when Patrick Mahomes came out, you know, I interviewed Patrick Mahomes two days before the draft. He came into our studio here in New York. And I basically said, that's my guy. That's the guy I'm taking. I shook his hand. His dad played for the New York Mets. You could tell that this kid was ready to go, that it was the, the football was going to be easy for him. And being a leader was going to be easy for him. Plus, he had, he had uh, of course, Andy Reid. And he had Alex Smith. So they had to wait a year before they actually gave him the reins to the starting job. But now we all see the greatness of Patrick Mahomes. I, 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 at, that guy at that time was the one guy that I felt like was a can't-miss player. I don't necessarily know that any of these guys are that, but I do feel like when I look at Will Levis, I see a bucking Bronco. I just see a guy that mm. needs a little bit refinement 
and a little, a, a little better understanding of, of offense and being able to get to one guy to the next guy. Bryce already has that. But what Bryce doesn't have, he doesn't have Will Levis' size. And the size thing is always going to be a thing for me, unfortunately, that, uh, that is going to make me think the bigger player, the athletic player, uh, may be the better player long term. Big thanks to Boomer Esiason joining Chris Lee yesterday here on the Houston Automotive Group Hotline. That is Chris Lee. I'm Dennis Cox, Grand Hill producing us this afternoon here on 99.9 The Fan.